found this music. Django Reinhardt, I'll see you in my dreams. I, I would hope not, because there's too many of you. But there's something to a shitty old little song like this, and, and it's not shitty. It's not. But... <laughs> it's such a product of its time, and it goes so well with this image. No, Cuphead is not out yet. Cuphead is still unreleased as of yet. You'll, you'll notice it says I'm streaming SteamWorld Dig 2 and Rock of Ages 2 and not Cuphead. That's that's a couple days away. So, that's not happening. As much as I would like to stream Cuphead, it's just, it's not, it's not available for me to do so yet. So, welcome to the stream. Uh, it's gonna be a chill stream tonight. Hope you're in the mood for a chill stream. It's been, um, it's been a day. It's been a very hazy day. And that's about all I can say about it. So, you know, chill stream. Welcome. Uh, we're gonna do two sequels. One is SteamWorld Dig 2, which I'm enjoying. And the other is Rock of Ages 2, which I've not played at all yet. But I liked the first one, what little I remember of it. So, we'll take a look. It'll probably be a one-off stream. All right. Let's jump back into Steam World Dig 2. The good news is it's still good. The bad news is I played a little bit off stream. It's not really bad news, but I did play maybe for 45 minutes the other day and uh well, I'll tell you what happened. Some stuff happened. I accidentally found a grenade launcher. I did some upgrades, so l let me show you. I, I went kind of further down here. You see all this stuff? I didn't do any real substantial things, but none of this was available. But I did that, and I just kind of um, acquired resources. And then I also backtracked and found a lot of stuff. That cave still isn't done. Anyway, I found a lot of stuff. I found, um... I found, like... A shortcut there. I found a cave. Like a fucking cave system, and I found a grenade launcher. So, I wanna go back there, because that was interesting. Like, the grenade launcher... You hold the button, and it sends a pressure bomb out as a grenade. I don't know if this is a mandatory upgrade. I have no idea. Oh, thanks for the reminder. Yeah, the YouTube thing was up. Um... So, yeah, I, I don't really- I don't know, really, I, I didn't want to find anything of too much substance, but I found a fucking grenade launcher. I was like, there's no way there's gonna be an upgrade when I'm backtracking. And, well, that's exactly what happened. Um, I found a bunch of stuff over in the beginning, but, um... So this is the tutorial temple. And it turns out the fucking tutorial temple had a bunch of shit in it. So, once you get the proper upgrades to explore it... There's just a bunch of stuff to do, including... ...a fucking grenade launcher. Whoops. Uh, right. So, yeah, there's, um... There's a lot of fall damage in this area. Uh, this is where I found the grenade launcher, and apparently... I didn't get all of the things in here. So it's called the Chamber of Secrets. Is it a Harold Potter reference? Who knows? Let me show you some new things I got. Dr. Grota's children's book. Ah, good old Dr. Grota, always with an instructional view on life's hardships. Forget your worries and enjoy good health. Kerm Frog. 
old, unopened invitations, hopes and dreams conceived, chronicled, and left to decay in the arms of oblivion. So, I found... Kermfreg. And some letters. Let's take a look. Let's take a look in here and see if I found, or if I can find what I missed. Uh, so while I'm doing that, and backtracking a little bit, some early Blade Runner 2049 reviews, like, well, not really reviews, social media reactions, like they had an, uh, you know, a review embargo for fear of spoilers. not gonna work. How do- how would one even... activate such a thing? Anyway, the social media reactions, there's been a lot of tweets saying it's- it's absolutely incredible, and it's even better. It improves upon the original. There's people saying that it's- it's a proper sequel, that it's really, really well done, and it's not a dumb action movie. And I'm like... Yes, please. I'm really, really interested in such things. There's a hidden wall on the top. Is that what's going on over there? Okay. And that, that's, um... Oh! That's extremely encouraging. That's extremely encouraging. There, there are diehard fans who have said that Blade Runner 2049 is excellent. There's also a Blade Runner anime <laughs> that came out today. Blade Runner 2022, and it details how replicants were banned. That's as, as much as I'm gonna say. Okay, that was, that was the only thing I had to get. And it was directed by... the guy from Wa Boy Bebop. Maybe you've heard of him. Um... What the hell's his name? Anyway, I watched it. It's only like 10 minutes, but it's a very solid 10 minutes. The only thing I didn't really care for was some of the voice acting and the, um... Okay, that's a secret. I can't really get that yet. Um, some of the voice acting... ...was not that great. And some of the, the lip movements just look bizarre. You know, I get that it's, it's anime, it's not supposed to look perfect, but it was like... Everything else was so good, and then there was a couple things that didn't really gel. That said, I highly recommend it, I loved it. Um, what's the name of the director? What? I did watch Star Trek Discovery. I'll tell you about that in a couple minutes. Hang on, did someone in chat? Uh, Wantanabe. There you go. They got Edward James almost back for Gaff, which is kind of cool. And even he, you know, I mean, he's he's old now, so it sounds a little a little weird. But it was still pretty good. Um, his performance was it was kind of nice to see him back in the role. So yeah, it was kind of cool. I mean, it looks like they're treating the series with respect. Well, it's not even a series, really. It's just a movie. But it's really, really exciting to know that there's, you know, people that really love this thing. And, um, so far the three short films leading up to the release, detailing some of the story elements that we are, you know, missing in between the original and the new one, they're really good. Excellent short films. Um, the live action ones with Batista and Jared Leto were great. Batista one was a little bit better. And the anime was surprisingly great. Like, it really nailed Blade Runner. Oh, fuck. Just randomly found a secret. Uh, I, I think Denny Villeneuve is gonna become one of my favorite directors of all time. If he keeps up this stuff. And then, like, he might be doing a Bond movie. He might be doing fucking Dune. It's like, Denny, please. I'm 
Jaden Smith anime on Netflix. I don't know. I think I've heard of it. I don't, I don't really know what it is. What is it? Like, is it him? Vinny, do you like Dune? I remember. No, I, I've never read Dune, but I, I do like the the movie when I saw it years ago. The one, and it wasn't even that great, but the one with um, Patrick Stewart and Sting. It's just, he's just voice acting, and it's ass. I know the, the, correct me if I'm wrong, the Jaden Smith anime looks like, like assholes. Like, no, real, like, real assholes. Chamber of Wheels. Consider these, like, little mini shrines from Breath of the Wild. That, that seems to be the best analogy for something like this. Okay, I don't think I have the ability to... So yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for Blade Runner now, I mean... It's no surprise that... Like, when I showed it the other night, there were a couple people that didn't like it. Most people seem to dig it. If only for the visuals. Um, it, there's, there's a lot of reasons... Why Blade Runner didn't gel with audiences. And I, I don't think it's a perfect movie. I, I actually do think 2049 could be a better movie. It might not be as classic. It might miss on some of the details that made the original as good. But I think it could be as a movie, just like... Straight up, you know, film. It, I think... There's room for improvement. So, yeah, man, this is a very exciting time for me. I mean, the Alien movie we got this year was just pretty decent. But... If I get, like, uh, uh, people are saying this is... Okay, listen, this is... This is a little extra hype. And, um, I don't want to overhype, but a couple of reviewers have said that this is a modern sci-fi classic. That is a very interesting thing to say, isn't it? Seems a bit loaded. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, God, there was another couple things I wanted to discuss. What the fuck was it? There was another thing I missed the other day, too. That's very funny. A fly marrying a bumblebee. There's another way to do this. Like, I, I want to get up there. You know? I got a, I got a boing up here. There's, there's something up here. Fuck, I can't get it. I don't have water either. Um, yeah, before Star Trek Discovery, there is a couple other things I wanted to mention. Oh, um... Red Letter Media did a little review on a movie called Joe vs. the Volcano, which is a Tom Hanks movie. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I know what I want to do. And... It's like a 1990 movie, I think, or 19... 1980? Nine or something? And uh, I had never seen it. But it sounded good, so I watched it. And it was good. 
That is all. It was a fun movie. It's surreal. Kind of reminded me a little bit of Life of Pi as well. Like some of the themes. Oh, fuck. I don't have water. I can't get this. Oh, that's anus. Alright, fuck it for now. I have to come back. So, yeah. If you ever get a chance to check out Joe vs. the Volcano, I think, um... I think it's a pretty enjoyable film. Meg Ryan's in it too, and she's kind of awesome in it. She plays a number of roles. And, uh... Kinda have a little crush on Meg Ryan. Like, 1989 Meg Ryan. Especially in that movie. Not that you needed to know that, but I'm saying it anyway. So yeah, at the end of the movie, spoilers, Joe literally punches a volcano to death. That's a spicy meatball I dropped. Man. I mean... It's like I'm a Quaker most of the time, you know? Like a Mormon. Absolutely mental, that is. She's 55 now. She wasn't 55 in, uh... What year? Doesn't matter. Hello, I'm a Mormon. Wait, are Mormons the ones that fuck through holes in a sheet? Let's see, now I forget. Yes. Yeah, that's them. Wow, there's, there's a lot of people here that didn't know that. There's a, a surprising amount of people that are hearing this information for the very first time. Oh no, oh, they have magic underwear. Okay. Yeah, there's something like that. I knew there was something, like magic underwear. Okay, I got it. So here, what's this then? Wagon wheel. <laughs> through rent, through wind and rain, many southbound, southbird small town bots defied their fears. Most of these big city dreams of fortune and glory ended up unfulfilled, buried beneath the burning dunes of the West Desert. This cave is complete. So, man, when do I talk about Star Trek? There's a lot of people here that probably will have no interest. But I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna tell you. I watched it. I watched uh, Star Trek Discovery. And it was- it was a thing. It was a thing. Let me- let me talk to this dude real quick and then- then we'll begin. We will begin in just a second. Okay, I got a, a map here. I also uncovered another brother. Not a Mario brother, just a random brother. And um, I unlocked a different thing. I unlocked this. Death explosions. Enemies explode upon dying. Apparently this makes things harder. I mean... Check it out. I haven't done it yet. Um, reveals all resources on the minimap. Very interesting, that is. Okay. Um, before we do any upgrades, let's let's just keep going. We um we 
we Star Trek fans, we, we like to nitpick and complain. I've seen Star Trek fans go insane over just a date being wrong, or like the paint job on a ship being slightly off, a chair being out of place. I'm not one of those Star Trek fans. I love Star Trek, but I'm not like a nitpicker. Like the details are absolutely appreciated, but I'm not looking for 100% consistency, but some consistency would be nice. The fact that this show is set before the original series and looks the way it does with technology that it has is a little distracting. Is it bad? Not necessarily. It, my overall review of Star Trek Discovery is kind of like this. If it wasn't called Star Trek, I think it would be a, a pretty decent sci-fi pilot. Like, as, as its own thing, it's pretty good. It's beautiful, great CG, but I mean, everything has great CG now. Everything looks amazing now, you know? It's- you gotta have a little more to it than that. Um... I'm gonna go into very minor spoilers, like super minor, nothing detailed. I'm not crazy about the characters. The main character is unfortunately very hypocritical, kind of unlikable. I'm expecting a character arc. But I have no real connection to this character. Um, and I tried. I tried. I liked the neurotic alien. He was fun. Um, the previous captain... There's a, there's a captain... She's awesome. You know, like, she's, she's pretty level-headed. She's a good captain. And then you have the main character. And it's like... Can, no. I'm, I'm good. And I'm kind of not really like... Meanwhile, every character in TNG I liked, and Deep Space Nine I liked, pretty much almost right away. Starting off with a main character that's kind of making bad decisions and is, to me, not very sympathetic. That's a bold move. We'll see if it pays off. I don't know if it will. Um, on a whole, I thought it was a pretty... It was a pretty fun watch. But for a show called Star Trek Discovery, we're not getting a whole lot of discovering. We're, we're going back. It's a show about war and Klingons. There's the minor spoilers. We're going back to Klingons, everybody. You know, boldly going where we've gone a thousand times before. The Klingons were great during the Cold War. The Klingons were like a very good allegory during the Cold War. I don't know what their purpose is now. I think, um, and they look like orcs, and their faces, like, are, are like, kind of, like, wet, and, like, and, like, slimy. The Klingons don't... They, they you know, they're like, they're like monsters, they're just warlike monsters. And... TNG and Deep Space Nine gave them so much depth that I don't, I just don't see. I just don't see here. I mean... They talk about honor, and then they do dishonorable things. Like, I'll give you a little spoiler. So, you might want to turn off if you don't want a spoiler here. They go on and on and on about honor, yet they... surrender. They do a jape surrender to kill people. Okay, you can- you can unmute now. Um... No, yeah. We're not discovering strange new worlds in Star Trek Discovery. We're- we're not... We're not doing a whole lot of exploring. We're- we're- we're fighting. We're- we're fighting and we're shooting. Um, some of the performances were pretty good. As- as a war sci-fi thing, it was good. You know, as something that I think is- is going to have a series arc, like an entire season arc around this Klingon thing that fucked up relations between humans and Klingons that ended up being the main problem in the original series and forward. Like, I don't know if we need to tell this story, but we're telling- they're going for it anyway. Uh, so there it is. It's not Star Trek. 
Everyone has a different idea of what Star Trek is. Maybe this is the only way Star Trek can survive. Maybe no one wants what Star Trek offered many, many years ago. Maybe, maybe we just need to watch like, you know, like Guardians of the Galaxy type stuff. That, there's no humor in this show, by the way. Uh, there was zero jokes, as far as I could tell. May, maybe like one or two little snide remarks, but um, that's about it. Sarek was in it, who's Spock's father. He saw he's all right. I mean, I, I like the actor they got for him. Uh, what else? What else can I say? I like that the computer has an ethical program. And there was a, like a debate with the computer at one point. That was kind of like classic Star Trek. As an action sci-fi thing, it's good. So if you watch it with that perspective, or if you've never seen Star Trek before, you might like it. I am not subscribing to CBS All Access and spending money on a, on a streaming service just for this show. I am not going to support a business practice like that, especially because the show is not in any way uh, something I want. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch the whole season, and then we'll talk about it again. But for now, it's just kind of there, and I don't care very much. So, shame. Not not unexpected. I mean, I saw the trailers. And you know, again, listen. I, I told you, we, us Star Trek fans are pains in the asses, and, and maybe what we want isn't what will sell. Maybe they just have to figure out how to... I, I can't figure out where the secret is here. Huh. Maybe this is the only way we can get this, this series, and we have to just deal with it. Vinny, it's by the arrow shooters. Okay. They're appealing to the mainstream. Yep. No, I, I know that. I know that. I mean, if you like, like, ships, I, I enjoyed watching the battles. Like, there's some really good ship battles. Um, and some classic-looking Trek ships show up, and, and there's, like, a really good combat sequence. Um, there's, like, ethical issues. There's a thing that happens later on in the second episode that is just like a war crime, basically, that the Federation perpet perpetuates, and they don't think twice about it, and they laugh about it, and they're just like, ha ha ha, we committed a war crime. It's like, okay, Federation, that's, that's, star okay, Star Trek, Star Trek, that's what this show is, sure. And then you have, uh, the Orville, which gets the look and feel of Star Trek down, but has incredibly lame Seth MacFarlane jokes and references to things that are, like, happening now. And I, I actually would say, can we just get something in the middle? Can we get, like, a combination between this and the Orville? And, like, not Seth MacFarlane? Then I'll be happy. What is the war crime? Um, I don't want to spoil too much, but it involves a mine. Okay, so I have to be near the arrow shooters. Which arrow sh This This whole place is arrow shooters, so... If, if you know where this is... Back at the entrance, there's a breakable block in the ceiling. Okay. Sorry, I, I'm kind of like... Missing stuff because I'm a little engaged in this conversation. Um, I'm not saying that Star Trek has never had, like, outrageous... Prime Directive breaks and, you know, other types of war crimes. I, I mean, it's- the show has always been about ethical dilemmas, but in the first episode when you have your main characters doing stuff like that, it's pretty, um, it's pretty frustrating. You can see the orange breakable blocks on the minimap. Oh, really? Wow, I didn't realize how little health I had. Oh yeah, there it is. Fucking hell, how did I miss that? Also, thanks for the tip about the breakable blocks. Wait, this isn't... This isn't helping.
Not that one. It's by the double arrow shooters, okay. Okay. And, again, for anyone who is interested, I've- I'm a pretty big Star Trek fan, so that's why I have a lot to say about this thing. It's not bad. It really isn't. And maybe part of me wanted it to be worse than it was, just because it's so radically different. There's a hidden wall at the end of the double arrow shooters. Oh my god, wow. I mean, I saw the orange thing there, but... Fucking hell, that was hidden. Um, anything else I can talk about with the series? Again, as a pilot, as a sci-fi pilot, it's, it's solid. I mean, it, it has problems as a Star Trek show, but I think anyone who doesn't care about that stuff and thinks I'm an old grandpa for saying any of this stuff, you might enjoy it. It, it appeals to the mainstream sensibility, and it's got good combat and stuff, and I guess the Klingons are monsters and stuff like that, but, you know... Maybe people want Klingon monsters, I don't, I don't know. I mean... Like I said, fuck consistency when you've got monsters. And, uh, the only- the, the other problem I have is this. I'm willing to watch the whole series, but it's not, like, episodic. They showed, um, previews of the next couple of episodes, and they were basically... You know, it's just a continuation of the story of the pilot. That's what it looks like to me. I'm gonna get this. Probably not supposed to get this just yet. So I think this this whole season is going to be an arc about the, their war with the Klingons, which again we've done Klingons forever, and now I'm finding out they're doing a Khan miniseries with Nicholas Meyer. Why do we care this much about Khan? He was fine for an episode in a movie. We don't need more Khan. Meanwhile, TNG was able to shit out episodes with brand new characters that were, like, classic on a weekly basis, and we're, we're going back to Khan. Whoa, random destruction. I don't even know what this is. But it leveled me up. Vinny, do you have to be in extremely intelligent to watch Rick and Morty? IQ has got to be over 140, scum. I mean, spro. Spro. That's like a, a bro and cuz kind of thing. Scrum. Scro. I just sequence broke. I think I did. I thought of a good um, nickname for Rick and Morty as a TV show. Prick and Mopey. I mean, it basically is that's the characters. Anyway, we were here last time. And I, I definitely sequence broke a little bit much there. So let's let's keep going. This is where you may remember the stream leaving off. I got an item up here and, and I stopped, and then I went backwards. Rick and Morty is jumping the shark. I disagree. I thought Aside from this previous episode, episode 9, 7 and 8 were two of the best of the series, I think. So... And anyone that has a problem with Pickle Rick, I think is more concerned with the mimetic nature of it, and the fact that people won't stop... The fan base has been insufferable with it. 
It was a fine episode. There was nothing wrong with the episode. They made it work. It was just, you know, annoying. Very annoying. A couple of weak episodes, but some really, really strong episodes. Nine jumped the shark, if anything. Sure, I mean, maybe. Maybe for, for you. I mean, that's, a, that's all subjective. I think any show can have a couple of weak episodes. It doesn't spell the doom of it. Um, my favorite TV show is Star Trek The Next Generation. Have you seen Sub Rosa? Have you seen A Matter of Honor? Or Code of Honor, rather? Sorry, Code of Honor? There's some fucking wretched episodes of that show. Vine Sauce jumped the shark like five years ago, though, so if you really think about it, you know, people still like trash. They literally made a jumping the shark episode in episode nine, or joke in episode nine. Oh, okay. I see. I didn't actually catch that. And, and that kind of goes back to Star Trek Discovery for just a second, like, I'm willing to give the show a chance. But when I hear stuff like, they gave Nicholas Meyer, the dude who directed Wrath of Khan, um, the reins on another series, like, they're gonna start another Star Trek series. Because they were afraid this one was gonna fail, potentially, or something like that. There's some bizarre line of logic. It doesn't exactly inspire faith. But it's probably just that Wrath of Khan thing. They're gonna do a, they're gonna do a mini series on Khan. Okay, like, I, who the fuck is asking for this? I get it. Ricardo Montalban was the shit. He did a great job. Um, the only TV show, well, there's probably been a couple, but the only TV show in recent memory that I actually stopped watching. Oh, I have an upgrade that protects me from lava for a second or two. You see that? The boot icon? Oh my god. I'm one lucky motherfucker. The only show I stopped watching in recent memory was, uh, Walking Dead. That got just too shitty. It got predictable uneventful, and it just became like a chore to watch these characters just go through the motions. So I just bailed. And that was like season five, or well, I don't even know what they're up to now. Maybe it was the end of season four. Fossil, the electrical presence of Vectron, has had an unexpected impact on both living and fossilized creatures at the, of the depths. Would you say Walking Dead is on its last legs? Get the fuck out of here. Are you kidding me? It's going strong. And they still- hang on, I'm grabbing a drink. And they still have- they still have, um... A spin-off? And God knows how much left. Kirkman's like, I don't want to end the comic. There's many years of Walking Dead to come, my friends. Zombies will be with us forever. <sighs> no, it's not a cold one. It's actually a room temperature green tea. I know, I'm cool. I'm very cool. The Walking Dead show and franchise is well on its way to becoming, if it's not there already, a zombie. You know? 
That's cool. That is so cool. This game got hard. Much like its subject matter, The Walking Dead will be propped up. A living corpse shambling about. Bankrupt creatively. Because zombies are... There's really not a whole lot you can do with zombies. After a certain point, I feel you can just keep going around in the same circles and then get to a bigger town led by a crazier psychopath and then you kill some people to have them go out on their own for a while get them into another town repeat, rinse rinse and repeat okay, we don't need death explosions. We, we just saw what death explosions does, I'm good uh, you lose less resources when you die you go to hell before you die. Sounds good. I know that the, the show itself became about people. And not so much about zombies and like... You know, humanity's worst elements and all that stuff. Um... Maybe I just... Maybe they just weren't writing it... In a way that kept my interest. I know- I know plenty of people who are still watching The Walking Dead and love it! Maybe it's good. Maybe there's still things in there that are- that, you know, that are good. I just- I just don't care anymore. The characters started, you know, doing nothing for me. And, um, I read the comics up until about issue, like, 87 or so. And those were fun for a while, too. But I think the, uh, the novelty wore off pretty quick for me. Cool. I mean, then we can talk about Game of Thrones. You know, in its seventh season. Here's a show that had some great seasons, and the previous season was a spectacle. But they didn't have any more source material. That got sloppy real quick. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, TV shows... I think the reason TV shows can go to shit so quickly... Well, even movie series can go to shit. It's not really exclusive to, t exclusive to TV. But, with TV, if you're doing, like, a ton of episodes per season, it's not really... You know, it's not really worth it. I think the quality can suffer. I like what Larry David's doing. Larry David doesn't do Curb Your Enthusiasm until he has ideas, and until he's ready, and he wants to get up off his ass and film a show. There's no schedule. Dude took a five-year break. Is Curb Your Enthusiasm any good? I love it. Yeah, I love that. It's one of my favorite comedy shows. So, maybe that's a good... Maybe that's a good series idea, like a good model for TV. Maybe just fuck off until you're ready. You know, stop trying to meet, like... ...demands. One of the reasons previous Star Treks got really bad is because they just started, like, 24 episodes per year. 24 episodes per year, with multiple series running. Talk about creatively bankrupt. They had done literally every story multiple times. But they still kept- they kept going! How many episodes of Vine Sauce are there? On the Full Sauce channel, there's like two- 1,500 and something videos. 
and that was probably a little over halfway through the Vine Sauce run. Don't get me wrong, the Vine Sauce TV show is trash now, and we don't even have any writers. We had a writer strike before the show started. <laughs> so let me sum up everything we've talked about. Sometimes things are good, sometimes they're bad, and sometimes they're always bad. But sometimes they start good and get bad. Alright. So now that I've said wise words of wisdom, that we can all learn to love and live by, things that probably will serve us well from this point forward in our lives, I can change the topic to frog memes. Boys, Pepe's, whatever you want. You name it. Frog memes. Oh wait, you can't do frog memes anymore. Fuck, we need a new animal. Um, can we do duck memes? Can we start, like, a duck meme thing? Conglomerate? Frogs get a bad rap these days. I don't know. I liked frogs growing up. I guess it's the it's the time of the turtle, however. Turtles must make a comeback. Excellent. Cassowary memes? I, I- listen, mate, I've only ever seen cassowaries in Far Cry. And that's it. Y you could have told me those were not a real animal and I would have believed you. Oh, fuck off. I mean, think about it, who here has actually seen a cassowary up close? and survive to tell the tale, for one. That was kind of scary. Cave complete. Kind of really want to get back to the surface. I have a lot of valuable resources that I don't want to lose. That seems interesting, whatever that is. They got him at a zoo! What the fuck is a zoo? Man, I ain't never seen a cassowary at no zoo. A zoo is something you come to California for. We have a thing called the Bronx Zoo, which is, like, massive. Animals. Crazy. It's crazy that we live on a pl- yo, like... 
Dude. Like, there's animals on this planet. What? Like, what? <laughs> Fucking animals. But yeah, I do like the, the Bronx Zoo. It's a really nice zoo. I haven't been there in many years and I would like to go back. Maybe I'll do that sometime before the weather starts to blow cocks again. Vinny, you can't call the people who live in the Bronx animals. Toast, I told you I was keeping an eye on you. Porden, uh, Porden? <laughs> what is that word? Yoda, Yoden. Portal of Pardon. I gotta get that. I can now teleport. <sighs> what was that? Talk with the robot above the city for the grenade launcher upgrade. Which guy? Oh, is that a pressure grenade launcher? Oh yeah, it's a Lux model, too. You bomb aficionado like me, friend? I'll show you my secret project. Oh, I've been bursting to share this with a true blast head. With my patent pending upgrade, your launcher can deliver three times more destruction than before. I'd let you take it for a field test, but, well, my R&D budget has been somewhat strained lately. Perhaps if you were to contribute, say, 5,000? Sorry, 500. Where'd the extra zero come from? I could... I promise you an exclusive backer-only blueprint of my invention. Alright. Hope this was worth it. It was not cheap. When are you guys doing another charity stream? Uh, usually August of every year. Or July, maybe. It depends. Uh, July, I mean, sorry. But August, it, we, we almost did August a couple years. I don't even know what my own fucking charity stream is. Good. Three pressure grenades instead. Okay, I can't get that yet, but we'll, we'll be able to afford that eventually. But once a year, yeah. I think this is my favorite song in the game so far. Zoinconium. Uh, another mineral of dubious validity. Do, do we have any, um... What are they... What would you call someone who studies m minerals? Are you a mineralogist? <laughs> There's, um, a rock, a rock scientist? A rock lobster? Geologist. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Let me guess, you got them geologists in zoos? Sure. Next, you're gonna tell me we keep sea creatures in, like, fish tanks. Oh, 
a rock expert. Thank you. See, now, now we've got... We've got smart people in the audience. You guys can watch Rick and Morty, no problem. Roxbert. Oh, okay. That's a good one, too. Roxbert. Cool. Thanks, mate. No, but really, but really, though. Zoinconium, Trashium. These are quality minerals. What? Oh, that's how that works? I mean, speaking of rock spurts, there's going to be a game called Rock of Ages 2 after this. Fuck that guy. Any, there's a mineral called coming tonight. You know, the sad thing is, I think he's telling the truth, guys. I, I vaguely remember that. It's true. No, it is true. It's true. Coming tonight. Unbelievable. It's named after the town of Cumming. C-U-M-M-I-N-G. But why is it coming tonight? And on no other night? Oh, oh, Cummington! It's named after a town called Cummington. So, like a meteorite plus Cummington equals coming tonight. Well, that, that kind of kills the mystery of it. Oh, I'm a little disappointed. I thought someone was having a laugh. I thought one of these um, geologists, sure, were having um, were having a, a bit of a jape fest. Doom Cult to-do list. Ah. Let's see. Find Divine Entity of Destruction. Check. Explain Cult's organization chart. Check. Replace vaporized members of the committee. Check. Listen to Entity's demands. Check. Decapitate old statue. Check. Buy milk. Hmm? Establish pilgrimage. Check. Prepare for end of the world in progress. Didn't we just do that? And it turned out that the world didn't end? Man, that would have been cool. Follow the Moon Rivers with a Huckleberry friend. Nah, I was just kidding. There ain't no end to the world. <clears throat> what, what I meant to say was... Uh, I was just cloudy with a chance of precipitation. A little precipitation. What I meant to say was, Will Smith is going to be starring in a new movie where he does yet another song for it. Which I've described as the height. We, like, we peaked 
when Will Smith was releasing movies and doing uh, rap songs to promote them. You know, just as a culture. Forget about the Library of Alexandria burning down. When Will Smith decided to stop making songs for his movies, you know, it's over, man. Stevie Wonder needs to write some more uh, coverable songs that Will Smith can take. I mean, borrow for a little bit, and uh, then they need to get him in another schlocky sci-fi movie. Did you ever hear the story about why Wild Wild West had a spider? A giant spider? A giant mechanical spider? It, it's an incredible story. It's incredibly stupid. There's a producer that I think was working with Kevin Smith, believe it or not, to do a new Superman movie. And I'm probably going to butcher details of this, but I'm going to try. Superman Returns, or Superman Lives, I think was the name of it. And um, it was going to star Nicolas Cage. Right? Ooh. There we go. And the producer kept saying all this outlandish, like, shit that he wanted Kevin Smith to write into the movie. And, um... One of those things was a giant spider. And he was like, ah, oh, dude, we- listen. We need a giant mechanical spider. Spiders are freaky. Gotta put one in the movie. And the project, I think, fell apart. And, sadly... He never got to see Superman fight a giant mechanical spider. But the bright side is, it made it into Wild Wild West. There's a video about this on YouTube. I think it's Kevin Smith talking about it, and I'm definitely not doing it justice. Love Kevin Smith or hate him, I say he's a pretty good storyteller, and he's got some pretty bizarre stories. Like, there's the story about how he filmed a documentary for Prince, and it was just, like, weird. Like, just completely fucking batshit crazy weird. And I believe whatever was filmed went into a vault, never to be released. Along with, like... You know, hundreds, if not more... Songs that Prince recorded, but never released. Rest in peace, Prince. At some point, those songs will be released, though. You know there's gonna be some kind of... Listen, if they're still drudging up shit from the Beatles and Nirvana... After all these years, just, like, putting together, like, terrible demos that no one should ever hear. And putting them in box sets. If Prince has, like, an entire discography's worth of material just locked in a vault, someone's gonna find that one day. Someone's gonna want money from his estate. They're gonna find some kind of loophole in a contract. And they're gonna release it and make a fucking fortune. And it's all gonna be Prince farting. Like, he knew this was gonna happen, so instead of songs, it's just hours of recorded farts on tape. Dog, if it's- if it's- if it makes you laugh, dog, it's comedy. Or it's just covers of Prince songs, but every- like, all the lyrics are, uh, changed to poop lyrics. Right? They'll still sell it. Someone will still make a fortune off of it. I hear this song on the new Prince album called Coming Tonight. It's just about a mineral, it's not about a... <laughs> Uh, yeah. A dinner roll. Yes. 
Yes, good. Yes. Yes, good. Yes. Yes. Thrust yourself into a pit. I'm ready to teleport. I don't know how. a really good ability. I know I want to write the song about coming tonight. It's just about a mineral. It's not about a dinner roll or a casserole. No, see now that that would be asshole casserole, which, as we all know, will be on Blood Bagel Three, uh, Four, Fist Factory. I'm much too lazy to write a song like that right now. The amount of people that are like, Vinny, you should write that song. It's, it's, it's flattering. It's encouraging. You guys want me to pursue my dreams. I, I really appreciate that. What about two and three? Well, I was, we were going to release Blood Bagel 3, Volcano. Uh, and just never release Blood Bagel 2. But now I'm thinking maybe we should just skip 2 and 3 and just release Blood Bagel 4 uh, Fist Factory. And we'll talk about Volcano like it happened, but it, in reality it never happened. It was only ever like an album cover. And, you know, people will be like, well, where's the fucking, where's the songs? Oh, there, you'll find them. Check, um, sp um, spot, spot a blible. Check, um, yeah, Guy Tunes. It's on Guy Tunes. And, um... Amazon plus Google? What the fuck are you talking about? Where's the music? It's on, uh, it's exclusively on Pandora. You just have to randomly get it. Like, you have to, you know, listen to all the right stuff. And then eventually Pandora will randomly put it on. Well, what stuff do I have to listen to? Oh, uh, like a lot of Anal Cunt, which is a real band, by the way, and not making that up. Yeah, listen to a lot of Anal Cunt and like similar music, like uh, Goblin Cock, and you'll probably end up getting it eventually. Just keep listening. Just don't give up. Don't give up. It might take a couple years. Or, <laughs> similarly, we could just release, like, seven or eight albums called Blood Bagel. Just the same title. It's, it's not as funny, but it's confusing, and it'll get shitty real fast.
like one song per album. That's it. That's all you need. Just one song. Throw one song and a couple minutes of silence and you got yourself a full album. shot. There's some interesting physics associated with it. And um, some of the tricks to make the hook shot work are a little tricky. Some of the sequence breaks. There's, there's a couple sequence breaks. I mean, I just did one by accident. But yeah, once you get the hook shot, almost everything opens up. Man, that lava upgrade is so good. You could do it with different bagel spreadings. You could do one called Blood Bagel with Red Locks. Red Locks? That's pretty good. Red Locks is the band that does bl the Blood Bagels. Weird looking stone. An interesting shape that pulls your mind towards either an imploding nebula or a chanting choir. When you can't hit the right notes, blame the stars. Hello, Hallo Katsi Chainsaw, a very popular brand and one of many items in their series of Texas-style accessories. Unchain someone else's heart. That's like a Hello Kitty joke, isn't it? Man, that would be nice. Wouldn't that be nice if Hello Kitty released a chainsaw? live in a world where it's acceptable for a toy company to release, like, high-powered weapons. Like Nerf releasing a semi-automatic rifle. I mean, they already have the infrastructure. Just convert it to metal. I've been informed that this is, in fact, a bad idea. Beth Sentient Switchblade was one of those things. Oh yeah. There was some good stuff in that episode though, I, I will agree. I liked the Sentient Switchblade, I liked all the little psychotic toys. That was fun. Do you still casually use your nerf dart- uh, thumbtack nerf darts? There was only one dart that was made into a weapon. I don't know where the gun is, I don't know where the dart is.
prevents your light from dropping below 50%. That's interesting. We'll keep upgrading. The dart is probably point up on some random seat in your home. That happened to a classmate of mine. It's not much of a story. But I just sat on a thumbtack. Another useless lever, huh? I guess I just don't have the... Uh, I guess I have to power this thing up. This brazier may do the trick. Yeah, I just have to find some way of lighting it. This brazier just may do the trick. This bustier... I mean, there are other ways, like BB guns, with like rat poison on them. Well, I, that probably won't work. But then, never mind. Never mind. You know, I was trying to think of different ways to convert, like, children's toys into weapons. But this is probably not a good line of discussion. And I'm, I'm gonna end it, like, now. Oh, boobs. Who dares stand before the great prophet of the Destroyer? Hey, I know this guy. He's the one that brought me to the other temple. Guiding light, what are you doing with this unworthy bot in my temple? Where's Rusty and what have you done to him? As I have foretold, Rusty the Destroyer will bring the great quake and shed our mortal coil. He granted us a doomsday device and then he left again. For his ways are mysterious. I must disable that thing. Yeah, tell us where you've hidden the Doomsday Device so we can blow it up. Oh, Guiding Light. How you have fallen. I will not let you two ruin our precious, precious apocalypse. Oh. Doomsday, Apocalypse, Marvel. Oh wait, isn't Doomsday Superman? Could never get into Superman. I like Justice League cartoon. A little bit. Otherwise, I was not really a big Superman fan. Always found him to be kind of, um... Too powerful. I like the superheroes with flaws. But I was never really into superheroes either as a kid. Not even Bort... Bortmang. Though I kind of wish I watched the show, the animated series, probably would have loved that as a kid. But yeah, I was never a comic guy, which is why when all the superhero stuff started happening, I was like, wait, what, really? Oh, come on! No, you cannot stop the coming of the Great Quake! The Doomsday Device is still secure, the end is nigh! Oh, <laughs> well, that's convenient. This is one tough bot. This Dorothy. Oh, I have a code for the game. A switch code. I don't know if anyone wants it. I'll be giving it away at the end of the stream. We'll do a raffle after I finish streaming this. Ignition Axe? <laughs> it's a fire axe. It's 
dopey. Is this Metroid? It's close enough, man. Dunky wasn't particularly, um, into Samus Returns. Kinda surprised to find out that Dunky isn't really into Metroid. He gave the, um, Samus Returns game a 3 out of 5. Like, a big 3 out of 5. Like, apparently he liked the game, he enjoyed it. Probably closer to a 4 out of 5, which... I think even that's lowballing it a little bit. But based on, um, based on what he said, he's not really crazy about a lot of the Metroid conventions. So it seems like he's not really into the backtracking, he's not really into the cryptic finding stuff. I, I kind of can't blame him, I, I understand that sentiment. But... Yeah, I don't think Samus Returns... It does streamline a lot, but I don't think it's going to do a lot to... Um, if you already don't like the Metroid series, it's not going to necessarily win you over 100%. And I agree that uh, it gets a little annoying fighting the same bosses over and over and over again. I don't mind it because they get varied. And I just like the way the game plays. And more fighting... That's fine by me. But... I think that's lowballing it, 3 out of 5. Even if it's a good 3 out of a 5. Regardless, he's entitled to his opinion. As objectively wrong as it may be. BAAAAAP! Nah, I think... I, <laughs> it's fine. Not everyone's into Samus Returns. I think a lot of people... A lot of people were talking about it when it first came out, saying it was... It was kind of, uh, samey and, and kind of crappy. And then the reviews came out, and I was like, no, this is actually a very good game. Playing it for myself... I mean, I love it. So... Do you usually agree with Dunkey's review? I've, I've not watched all of Dunkey's videos. Uh, I don't know what he reviews most games, but it seems like he's a little tough on some games that I like. But there are times I, I definitely feel like our, um, our tastes are in aligned. So, I guess it just depends. I know it's a bit of a cop-out answer. That's one big pool of molten minerals. This cult is really into this whole fire and doom stuff. I can't cross that thing without melting. Maybe if you just dip your foot in, in and see, it might not be that hot. I'd have to be fireproof. Or if you were as cool as me, you could just fly across. I'm kind of a little fireproof. So, yeah, but I think the Metroid Samus Returns game was necessary for the series to get itself back on track. And getting all those memorable kind of conventions back and getting them perfected with a couple of extra little moves and stuff is nice. It's time for something new with Metroid. Sure, I've heard the ruins are occupied by a crazy cult worshipping the end of the world. That's their business. I ain't seen- oh, I don't remember how I did this guy's voice. I ain't seen- and I ain't want to pry into other bots' affairs, see? 
Whoa. Is that what I think it is? How on earth did you get hold of an ignition axe? Bet it was hidden away somewhere in the Eastern Temple. I read about it in one of my tool magazines, the possibility of the thing existing. I just can't believe it. Uh, it's really nice. Does more damage, has other uses. Alright, um, I can get grenade upgrade. Adds a chance of spawning an extra health orb from enemies defeated with the pickaxe. We talked to that kooky professor that that's building the rocket higher up in the city. I heard she inherited a lot of money, but now she's spending it all on that spaceship. What a waste! We had someone like that back in the village too, putting together a rocket. There must be something going around, don't you think? I bet this is the fanciest one though. One back home was just a converted silo. That crazy temple cult seems to be protecting some sort of doomsday device. Is that what's been causing all these dang unnatural shivers? Hey now, this is clearly someone else's problem. The mayor's office can't be expected to deal with end of the world scenarios. My main job is to get bots to bring precious stones out of the mine and tax them for it. You're the one in charge, idiot! You ran for this darn office, now deal with it! Hey, this girl bot's already been to the temple. She could just head back there and disable that device. There, problem solved. Don't forget to bring back some more of those precious stones. <laughs> Have you seen the Professor Sherman's new rocket yet? It's a real beauty. Sure is impressive. It's perfectly safe. I helped with the calculations after all. It takes a lot of pressure to send something like that into space, you know? Everything must be precisely calibrated down to the last decimal. I mean, when it comes down to it, a rocket is really just a big bomb, isn't it? I like where this is going. Why don't we ask the professor for a ride? Maybe later, Fen. The cult is protecting some sort of device that could be generating the quakes. Then your next step should be to dismantle that generator. That might stop these earthquakes. Yeah, dismantling sounds like fun. Let's do that. I may not even have to complete the construction of this rocket. Is there any chance of me going back to jazz punk? I finished it. I was starting to found the streams pretty decent. Whoa. Uh, well... The good news is, Jazz Punk is finished. It's on my Full Sauce channel, in full. You can watch all of the episodes. Anyone want to cross the Windy Plains of the East will need some way to handle the head with their uh, headwinds, partner. 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 <laughs> Would have been nice to have met that fellow who saved your little pal. Didn't really have any pressing business there during the particular chunk of time. What do you say his name was? Krusty? No, Trusty? That's it, isn't it? Rusty. <laughs> right, right, so he shut down some giant monster down in there that now mine all by himself and then just gone and disappeared? Well, happy searching to you, young Dot. I hope you find him in good health. Yeah, I guess you're back for more upgrade cogs. Okay. Dude sells cogs. Krusty. Hello, yes, I'm looking for my friend, Krusty. Have you seen... have you seen him? Boys and girls, it's me, Krusty the Robot. Oh God, that that, that voice. Ronald's treasure chamber only operating. Acolytes of level six or higher may enter. Oh, 
Fuck. What is it called in, in uh, high mentology? What are these crystals? I didn't see any braziers nearby. Brazers? Braziers? Jimsy device is not in there. I want to go destroy that thing now. OG8? What do, what do you have to achieve? You have to achieve OG8 to get into the, um... The high-ranking things? Brazier? <laughs> More Thetans? Isn't the point to remove Thetans? This must be the Doomsday device. Really didn't want to believe Rusty could do something like this. It seems to be a lot of Vectron parts in that thing. Let's smash it. A lot of Verizon parts in there. That was great! Which temple, uh, Doug? Looks pretty harmless now, doesn't it? The Steambot and Vectron parts all jumbled together in this thing. Why would Rusty build something like this? You worry too much. Less thinking, more smashing. We should head back to the Oasis and tell Rosie that the device is disabled. Then they're gonna tell me I need to disable the other devices, even though I already disabled one of the other ones. No, which temple? Why? Why fuck me? I didn't say anything. Which which one? Do not presume that Doomsday will be a bad thing. It's fine. It's totally fine. Up here? Maybe? Let's see. Now I have this here pickaxe. I can use it. Oh, there we go. There's two in the temple and two underneath the temple, but above where you are. Okay. that crusty audio again. I don't know why that happens. Like, my capture card just starts, like... ...presuming. Demon's crib. What's under the crib? I love how much extra stuff there is in this game. There's been a good amount of additional things to do. Oh, there's a, a Ralph Bluton. Inflatable friend. <laughs> Loneliness is being the only one at a cuddle party. <laughs> when I dial the telephone, nobody's home.
Who wrote that? Roger Waters? It's your very own blow-up Ralph pillow. Wait a second. Apparently I missed something. Yeah, fall damage. Yep, I missed something. Vinny, have you ever been to a cuddle party? No, I've never been to an orgy. How the fuck do cuddle parties stay PG? Is that even possible? Freddy- <laughs> Guys, it's a Freddy Mercury cocaine cuddle party. You know, do some drugs, like a rock star, and then... And then you just, um, you just cuddle. I, I, yeah, Idiot Abroad had a... Had a cuddle party. The secret is really hard. It's in the lava, and you'll need more hearts to survive. Oh, okay. Stay hooked on the ceiling. The lava will go down. Here's the hook shot to wait. Okay, thank you. I, I was a little bit of a spoiler, but I, I'll take it. I would have never thought to do something like that. see it now. It's like eyes wide shut. You know, they go into the big mansion. There's a dude wearing a cloak. Someone's got a fucking plague doctor mask. You know, the whole thing, the whole thing. And then they just cuddle. That's it. They're just, they're just wearing mask, uh, masks anonymously and cuddling. Fucking Rothschilds are there. You know, all the richest families in the world are there. Anonymously cuddling with each other. It's just a really nice, wholesome environment for everybody. It's safe. You know, it's safe. There's like a code word. The, co the code word is fuzzy pickles. There you go. Lava has gone down. Lava continues to go down. Is there really someone in chat that actually swam through the lava to get this hidden thing? Like, did you- did you really? Did you really swim all the way down? I can't believe that. Fire token. The glyphs on this ancient tablet depict the temple's original founders as human fire cult. Pretty hot bunch. Where there is no temple, there shall be no homes. Do it at the beginning. Oh, I guess you could swim down there at the very beginning. 
Yeah. Okay, th that's possible if you have a lot of health, yeah. For sure, my scro. For sure. I'm looking for the rest of the torches. Uh, Rock of Ages will be up in about 15, 20 minutes. For anyone who was asking earlier. Do you know professional cuddlers exists? Yes. No. What are you talking about? What do you mean, you get paid to cuddle? Again, how does this not just turn into prostitution? Just, just touch it. Like, it doesn't seem, it doesn't, it doesn't seem feasible. Whoever said they weren't also prostitutes, and then Toast being a smartass again. You realize people can be close to each other without fucking. Maybe in your line of work. <clears throat> but you know. You know. There's probably like a, a percentage. Maybe it's a small percentage. But I believe there, there to be a percentage of times where the cuddle party turns into just just touch it and see what happens I think that's just human nature I think there's going to be some of that touch what your butt. Come on. You have to make me say it. Most I've been to pretty much end up that way. Wait, do we have a first-hand account? Really? So what, you've been to cuddle parties and they end up turning into, like, sex-fueled orgies? Or am I misunderstanding what you just said, chat member? So, yeah, that's, um, that's an interesting statistic there. I don't know how to feel about that, really. Oh. Oh. Theremin. The future of Electronica is here. Wave your hand to raise the haunting feeling that somewhere, someone has fallen into a deep well and needs help. Come to think of it, it looks like nobody's touched it for a long, long time. Just touch it. Won't make you sound like an opera star.
Thank you, Steak Spoon, for the information. So I've learned today that cuddle parties are real. I've learned that professional cuddlers exist. And I've learned from someone who's been to such things that sometimes things can happen. Not necessarily sex, but just thanks. And that's okay. If there's consenting adults in the room and a shaman to watch over any activities. You always need a shaman. Just remember that. Don't do things like cuddling alone or with a bunch of inexperienced cuddlers. You bring a shaman with you who stays non-cuddling the entire time and they'll make sure that you're okay. And a pope. <laughs> and a plague doctor. Sure. Sure, all of these elements are very necessary for such things. What if I bring a shaman to cuddle with? Do I need another shaman? Yes, you need... Trash... What the f... Wait a minute. This was the treasure room? This was the treasure room! There's a hidden treasure up here. Okay, now this- this is a treasure room. This is a proper treasure room. The treasure was the dirt we f we mined along the way. It seems like a pretty nice upgrade. Surprised it's not. Well, I mean, maybe it's mandatory. I don't know. Mandatory fun. Hook shot has become long shot. Yeah, this game... this game is fun. Good... good shit. Lots of good stuff happened today. Um, some sequence breaking, some mining, some story stuff. We'll do more soon. I was afraid that this was gonna be a semi... not interesting game to stream, but it... it definitely... it seems like it's interesting... to me, at least. I don't know how you guys feel, but... I've been enjoying it. Definitely on the chiller side of the stream spectrum. And I'm okay with that. You know, I didn't even use the grenade launcher this entire time. Okay, we'll get the health thing. Uh, deflect for first projectile that hits you. It takes 30 seconds to recharge. We can even get that. And probably could even... I could save the other one. Alright, so... So we're gonna do... A raffle in just a second. For a switch key... For this game. No, please do not drop controller, okay. 
All right, then a little bit of Rock of Ages too. 